Today is Passion Sunday. <clears throat> and we begin this very brief period of time in the year called Passion Tide. And a word about that in a moment. But please note that this coming Friday is the first Friday of the month of April. <clears throat> and therefore we, we will have the all-night adoration on this Friday night into Saturday. Notice that Friday is also the wonderful feast day of the seven sorrows of our Blessed Mother. So I certainly do encourage you to attend the Mass that day and be present for the Stations of the Cross and take part in all-night adoration of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Notice next Sunday is Palm Sunday, beginning Holy Week, leading us through the events of our Lord's passion and death and to the day of the resurrection the following Sunday. <clears throat> now, there will be the ceremonies of the blessing of palms and giving of palms in the procession, all at the first Mass next Sunday. That will be at 7 o'clock in the morning. And the second Mass, rather than being at 8.45, will be 45 minutes later. The second Mass will begin at 9.30 next Sunday. Please make a note of that, if you would. <clears throat> During this Passion Tide, you notice that the Masses take on the character of more of a requiem Mass, almost a funereal, funeral Mass. The Psalm 42 is not prayed at the prayers at the foot of the altar, so they are shortened, just as a requiem Mass. And there are other elements of the Mass that are like a Requiem Mass during this time in anticipation of the suffering and death of our Lord on the cross. Notice, of course, that the, the statues are all shrouded with the purple claws. And they, that actually represents a number of things, one of which the fact that there would be no saints if our Lord were not willing to suffer as he as he has and as we remember during this time, there would be no saints or souls of any human being in heaven were it not for our Lord's willingness to become one of us and to suffer for us. But also it is as though the, the saints are shrouded in, in uh, anticipation of our Lord's being shrouded and laid in the tomb. So there are a number of things, a number of reasons why the Church shrouds the statues of the saints during this time, but that they are a reminder of the solemnity of the time that we enter. Even the crucifix is covered, but it will be solemnly unveiled on Good Friday, as you know, and that will be the one figure we will have here of any, any human form. Uh, we have our Lord hanging on the cross, shrouded, now uncovered on Good Friday, solemnly during the ceremonies of that day. Now the epistle for, for this, the Mass of Palm, uh, Passion Sunday, rather, is taken from the epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 11 to 15. Brethren, Christ being come, a high priest of the good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of the, this creation, neither by the blood of goats or of calves, but by his own blood, entered once into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and of oxen and the ashes of a heifer being sprinkled, sanctified such as are defiled, to the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who by the Holy Ghost offered himself without spot to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to serve the living God? And therefore he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death for the redemption of those transgressions which were under the former testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> Please stand for the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> the Gospel is taken from that according to St. John, chapter 8, verses 46 to 58. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. <coughs> <coughs> At that time, Jesus said to the multitudes of the Jews, Which of you shall convict me of sin? 
If I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. <clears throat> Therefore you hear them not, because you are not of God. The Jews therefore answered and said to him, Do not we say well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? But I honor... Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you have dishonored me. But I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Amen, amen, I say to you, if any man keep my word, he shall not see death forever. The Jews therefore said, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If any man keep my word, he shall not taste death forever. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead. Whom dost thou make thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifieth me, of whom you say that he is your God. And you have not known him, but I know him, and if I shall say that I know him not, I shall be like to you a liar. But I do know him, and do keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced that he might see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews therefore said to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Before Abraham was made, I am. They took up stones therefore to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Please be seated. <clears throat> Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham was made, I am. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dear faithful, during this week we learn things of our Lord at the Masses, each of the Masses of Lent having its own epistle and gospel, special for that day. We see in the gospel of our Lord at the well in Samaria, resting because he's very tired. The gospel makes the point of that, that our Lord rested there because he was, he was very weary. He was very fatigued. And we see here the Son of God experiencing what you and I feel in our bodies when we're very tired, in our hearts when we're very weary, feeling perhaps even exhausted. Yes, God knows that feeling. He experienced that feeling. He knows exactly what it means when we feel tired, when we feel tired, exhausted, because he experienced that. We also saw our Lord at the tomb of Lazarus during this last week. And our Lord was so moved by grief that he was, well, we can understand from the gospel literally sobbing with sorrow. So much so that the more, those who were gathered there to mourn the death of, death of Lazarus actually stopped and commented to each other how much our Lord must have loved Lazarus who had died because they saw our Lord weeping with grief. It must have been Rather than just a tear or so here or there, our Lord must have been, as it were, racked with grief. But he wasn't weeping for the dead Lazarus, whom he was about to raise back to life again. Our Lord was grieving at our grief. He was filled with sorrow at our sorrow. Our Lord was moved by seeing the sufferings of the mourners, and especially of Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha. They felt that our Lord had betrayed them because he did not come when they sent word that Lazarus was gravely ill. Our Lord suffered because of this. He was filled with sorrow. Yes, he was racked with sorrow at this. Our Lord, the Son of God, knows what it is to sorrow. He knows what it is to grieve. He knows what it is to be so moved 
by our grief that he sobs with grief himself. These are the tears of our Lord, and it shows us very clearly that Almighty God knows what it is to suffer. Our weariness of body and our grief of soul. He chose to become one of us in order to experience these very things. <clears throat> and our Lord knows, Almighty God knows the feeling of what it is that you and I will never know. He knows what it is to have the spikes driven through his hands and feet and hang by them on the cross. We may know what it is to feel weary. We may know what it is to feel sorrowful, but we don't know what that is. But he knows what it feels like because he underwent it. He suffered it. All so that you and I would not have to suffer the sorrows of hell. And yes, he experienced on the cross what it is to feel that abandonment of a soul in hell. Even that, he went that far for you and me. God knows that feeling of a soul in hell from his own personal experience, something that he experienced for us so that you and I hopefully will never know that suffering. My dear faithful, we see our Lord Almighty God walked this earth as our Savior and suffered for us here. We must never doubt his love for us. We must never doubt his love for us. It is our love for him that is in question, but never the love that he has for us. In the epistle today to the Hebrews, St. Paul talks about what our Lord accomplished by his sufferings, that he, he actually opened up a dwelling place, a tabernacle, that's what it is. That's what it is in the epistle today, a dwelling place. It was the dwelling place of Almighty God, heaven, the dwelling place of the blessed angels. But it would have been the dwelling place of no human being because sin would have excluded every single human being from that dwelling place of heaven. But for the fact that our Lord was willing to come here and suffer for us and open those gates to that wonderful tabernacle that true and eternal tabernacle, not made by the hands of man, but by the power of God, heaven, where God's creatures could dwell in a great celebration of divine love. That is true joy, that is meant to be our true joy. Yet we would have been locked out of that by our sins if God himself had not come for us. And so St. Paul tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ, by his own blood, by the power of his own suffering and death, opened to us the way to enter that dwelling place and there to have eternal life with angels. This is the message of the Shroud today. There would be no human being who would ever enter into that dwelling place of heaven, that perfect tabernacle, but for the fact that Christ was willing to come here and dwell among us, as he does even now in the tabernacle on our altar, a dwelling place for him. Now, our Lord was not just a sacrifice like any other. The Jews offered the scapegoat, but the scapegoat could not save us from our sins. The Jews offered oxen on their altars, but that could not save us from our sins. The heifer that they immolated, the red heifer that they put to death and burned to ashes and used the ashes to sprinkle on the sinners of the world here. The Jews used that, those ashes to purify the souls, they thought, of those who were sprinkled by them. Those ashes could do nothing for the remedy of any sin. They were all symbolic of something to 